Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Andrew Krause. I'm one of the co-founders here at InventRight and we have one of our advisors and our inventors relations manager, Dana Knowles, and she's on the line. Welcome, Dana. Hi, how are you? Good, good. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's been a while since we did an interview. I think the last one you and I did, you were at my house and we yeah. were recording back when you were a student. You've been with us for a long time, but we have, I don't think we've done an interview together in a long time. That was in 2000, I think it might have been January or February 2019. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you've been with the company for a long time. And you were a student before that. But anyway, so what we're going to talk about today is um, Dana's going to give you some tips on reaching out to companies. Um, but first, I wanted to ask her, um, she is one of our advisors. So when, you get, when you're interested in one of our programs, you talk to Dana or Sylvia or sometimes myself about the program. And she was observing something when she was doing calls with people interested in our program and kind of pushed Stephen and myself to off to create a new offering here at InventRight. So what were people asking for, Dana, and why do we have this new offering? And then let's make sure to give people a lot of tips on reaching out to companies too, because that's kind of part of the whole mix of what we're discussing here today. Yeah, so um, Sylvia and I both realized that there was kind of a shift in the type of inventor, not good or bad, but just the type of inventor that was reaching out to us. Um, these were inventors that didn't necessarily want to learn the process. Possibly they've invested a little bit more um, into their product idea. Maybe they had a patent, maybe they had a prototype, um, and they were busy people. I mean, we're all busy people. Everybody's yeah doing something but they were professional people maybe and they didn't want to take the year membership even though we explained that it doesn't take a year to get your product idea in front of companies that you know within 10 12 weeks we expect that you should be ready with everything you need to start reaching out to companies and then you can work on other ideas but this particular type of inventor maybe only had one idea and they were at a point now where they were at they were at the point where they were ready, almost ready, to start showing it to companies. And they didn't want to venture. They definitely wanted a license. And when we would say to them, well, you know, we have a year membership and that kind of they didn't want to do it. So we started seeing that a lot, not in the first couple of years. They they started. didn't wanna they didn't wanna do the work themselves to reach out to companies, make a sell sheet, make a list of companies, do all the things file a provisional patent, yeah. that sort of thing. But I think that they still wanted to be in it. They just didn't want to do the hard part. <laughs> the okay. Hard part. Right. The hard part was like the, 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 the hardest part, honestly, I believe, about licensing is reaching is finding connections and reaching out to the key people who are the decision, decision makers when, they're look, when looking at new product ideas. Mm -hmm. And so Sylvia and I had talked for quite a while before we even you know pitched it to you guys and saying, hey, this is what we're seeing, kind of brainstormed a little bit. How would it work? Could it work? Could we do it? Um, because we had to think about it before we even brought it up to you and Steven yeah. um, so that maybe we had some answers for you from the from the jump, you know, and um, that's that's how we came up with it. But I, I'll tell you what, though, you guys weren't you. You guys, you took a little bit of convincing to to get it done. Well, we've been we've been thinking about it for for decades. I mean, we're going to be celebrating our 25th anniversary. But but talking to our advisors or salespeople that are, you know, talking to clients, potential clients every day and inventors every day, you know, and right now today, not we had the thought, no, we don't want to do that 10 years ago. But today, um, that was very valuable, what you, you and Sylvia brought to the table. And so we'll, we'll get into Gateway a little bit at the end. But what, so now we're doing Gateway where we're, we're, we're doing it for people. So we're, we're finding the companies and then giving them the companies that they can then reach out. So we're providing a service that instead of coaching, we're, we're providing the outreach service if you will, if you want to call it that. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And it's, and that is, um, you know, there's, there's no easy way around it is that I, I believe being going through our membership back in 2017, 
that researching the companies, disqualifying some companies, finding the right people in the company and learning what to say to them, that's that was probably one of the hardest parts because it was so foreign to me. And thank goodness I was in the Invent Right membership where I had a coach and you know, you had already figured everything out. I just had to follow your cue. But there's a whole like I said, there's a there's inventors that they don't really want to do all of that research. Right. And that, what we do in Gateway, we do all the research and make the connections for the inventor. Right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll get back to that in a little bit, but let's talk about your tips for reaching out to companies. Oh. Can you kind of explain the the? We can do mindset stuff. We can do technical stuff. Whatever you want to share, whatever would be useful for people. Because you had mentioned that's one of the hardest things for people to do. I don't think it's hard for. I think it's hard for some people to get started at all, mm-hmm. and then. And for some people, it's not hard to get started, but it's hard for them to keep going when they're getting so many no's or so many non-responses, and they have a really hard time with that. So anything you have to share, whether it's mindset stuff or actual techniques for reaching out, some of the different methods that we use, the methods that we would use if we're doing it for an inventor through Gateway or if we're guiding and mentoring them through our premium program, what are some tips you have for reaching out to companies? Well, it's funny when you say about um, keeping motivated and going, I can honestly say that the, well, another hard part or maybe the most psychologically hard part of this is when they, when companies say no, we're mm-hmm. not interested, not a right fit. I mean, they're never, I've never had a company be like, your product sucks, it's terrible, what are you doing, you're an idiot. They were all really, really nice, but you know, rejection is that the hardest thing for human beings to deal with. You know, we all yeah. want to be accepted. And there was many times, and, and I always, I, I tell people this all the times I was all the time. I was so glad that I had a coach that was my cheerleader that kept me accountable and kept me going forward. And there were, there were many times that I thought that this, this is not hard. It was just discouraging when I mm. kept getting the no after no after no. But what I learned and through InventRight is that every time I got a no, I followed up with a thank you so much for your time. May I send you more ideas if I have them? And every one of those people said absolutely because I was professional. I took the no with grace and dignity. And that, therefore, I made a good connection. Um, and back then, I'm assuming we were teaching people that when just as we do now when you get a no you didn't get rejected you made a connection if you got another product in that same product category you made a connection you got their email you know they said no to this particular product so it wasn't a rejection it was actually you made a relationship yep every one of them yeah and i know them now because this was what seven years ago i was pitching my shower caddy and I was just at the Chicago Housewares show, and there's people there that I pitched my idea to, and they'll say, how's that product doing? You know, how's that good for you? And the, the one company even said, I should have taken it on. I'm like, yeah, you should have. <laughs> that, was kind of, that was kind of funny. But um, another thing that uh, we, you had mentioned about um, connecting with companies and how do, how do I do it? Well, believe me, I did not know how to do this when I first got started. I had not a clue. And InventRight the coaches, the the scripts that you offered really helped me how to, there's a process to reaching out to companies. It's not just like, you know, throwing your sell sheet at them and throwing your video at them. There's a process to introduce yourself. What are you going to say? I always say the very first couple sentences that you say to a company or to a person in a company will distinguish will determine how the rest of the conversation is. Wait, 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 wait. First couple sentences. I want to write two pages in an email. Is that not okay? No. Are you telling me not to do that? Never. Never. Oh, come on. I want to tell my life story and how I came up with the idea and why it's why it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. No? No. Oh, damn. Okay, fine. And I probably would have done that too. But, you know, I'm, there's a, I, I use LinkedIn a lot. Some people love it. Some people don't. I use LinkedIn a lot. And when you when you go to connect with somebody at LinkedIn in a particular company, uh, they it gives you an option to send a note. And you're only allowed to put 300 characters in that note. And so I'm a believer. There's a reason why LinkedIn only says 300 characters. Sure. You can't say what you want to say in 300 characters, then you probably shouldn't say it. Probably, yeah, probably not. Probably. And guys, Dana's gotten so good with reaching out. 
She's been one of our advisors that talks to people that are interested in the program, but now she's our head of inventor relations. And so she's making relationships with all these companies that when somebody signs up with the program, we have those companies. When they sign up with Gateway, we have those companies. And so she's working very hard every day to, to reach out. You're doing, you're doing that literally every day now. Um, and you get it, you're getting a lot of no's, you're getting a lot of like non responses. I mean, can you talk a little bit about how that is so normal and that, can you set expectations a little bit for people that haven't watched a bunch of our videos yet and don't know this, or maybe haven't watched those videos? So when, when I reach out to a company, first of all, I research, first of all, it's so important to research the company, research the company and make sure that you're product idea is a good fit for them. So there's a few things you have to look at. What materials do they work at? What price points are they at? Okay. Um, what sizes do they make of products? I mean, if my, like, and I learned this from the shower caddy that I licensed, my shower caddy was mesh. So if I was, like I said, reaching out to metal shower caddies, plastic shower caddies, wooden shower caddies, they're not going to look at my product idea. So I had to make sure that I was reaching out to companies that dealt with mesh products. Or, or any sewn product. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 But that was just the point. So your your lesson there is so companies are pretty much gonna do whatever they already do. Like if they just make things out of metal and you're like, hey, there's this plastic thing, that's probably not gonna happen. Yeah. So then I re this is the process I go through. I research the companies and I might I might Google top 20 companies in the shower caddy in the mesh shower caddies and you find all the companies and I put them all. I'm I'm old school. I do paper. I do pen and paper. And I write down the whole list of companies and then I go to their website and I look at their product line. And then what I'm doing, I'm not really trying to find, I'm doing it kind of backwards. I'm not really trying to find companies. I'm trying to disqualify companies. Hmm. Disqualify them from me reaching out to them or putting them at the bottom of the pile. So right. after, I, after I get my list of companies, then I'm going to go onto LinkedIn and find that company. Now, not all companies are on LinkedIn. Um, if they're not on LinkedIn, then I'm going to have to email or I'm going to have to call the gatekeeper. Uh, but let's just take, for instance, I found a company and I found 50 employees that I want to reach out to marketing manager, sales, CEO. I love reaching out to the CEO. I get a lot of responses from CEOs because I don't think anybody reaches out to them. I don't know. You know, like, oh, we want to talk to somebody. I don't know. So uh, I reach out to everybody who has a certain title. I mean, I'm not going to reach out to somebody in warehousing or somebody in accounting or anything like right. that. There's certain titles and we learn how to do that and invent right and then i will connect and make and put a note in every single one of those every time i connect i'm going to write a note connect write a note it gets pretty easy because if you're reaching out to the same company you're really just copying and pasting all you're doing is changing the first name sure the only thing you gotta remember is if you, if you change companies change the name of the companies in the in the message because i've done that before but too. you know i mean i know people are afraid of calling but a lot of our students early on with the coach's guidance they yeah. get used to it, but they're afraid of copying and pasting and just inviting somebody to their LinkedIn network or just sending an email. You would think that would be easier, but some people, and I don't think it's just the, the act of calling is scary if you're not familiar with calling, but the act of sending an email, you wouldn't think it would be, but psychologically they're worried about right. getting rejected, right. um, getting no. So you're basically getting non-responses and knows all day long with your job as inventor relations and invent right. How do you, well, you know, how did you deal with it earlier? Because now you've obviously got it down, but you're still probably dealing with it because you're dealing with it in mass more than any of our students are. I mean, it, I my, really struggled in the beginning with the nose. I yeah. honestly, I want to quit. There was a lot of times, and I remember saying to Paul Sorensen, my coach, I don't want to do this anymore. This isn't any fun. Uh huh. And he said, yeah, Dana, this isn't the fun part. Keep going. Go get five more notes. Okay, all right. If you do that, I'll go get five more notes. All right, I want to I wanna glom on to something you said. You said it isn't fun. But you're, and, and some of our students, they're like, it's not fun, but I have to do it. And they learn to, they, they build the skills and they got used to doing it. I don't like doing it. And then we got some students, they're like, I actually like doing it. These are like sometimes engineers that they thought that salespeople were evil because what you're doing is not really selling. You're just trying to show them your sell sheet, you know? Um, and they're like, I actually get off on it, Andrew, now. I didn't think I could ever do something like this. But I know you, you, 
you you said it wasn't fun back then, but I think you've got this certain attitude that's really kind of like this is a challenge. I'm gonna do. It's kind of like a I'm gonna fight and I'm gonna do this and and I'm determined and I you want to get your wins every once in a while. Maybe some days you don't get a win. Some days you get more. What what is motivating you to? Is it just getting the wins? Is it the rush? What is it? I think it is. But you know, back to kind of the numbers. Like if I, I I'm just gonna be realistic. If I reach out to 50 people in one company, if there's 50 people to reach out to, I mean, some companies are really small. Right. They might only get two people respond. That's 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 reality. The more it's like the more stuff you throw on the wall, the more it's going to stick. You have you, right. know, you can't just reach out to one person in a company and then sit back and say, well, they didn't get back in touch with me. What's up? So I think the reason that I'm so good at getting in is because it's a numbers game. The more right. people reach out to. And then what's interesting is that when one person in a company connects to me, another person in the company will connect and then another person in the company will connect and then mm. another and then it, I have all these connections in the companies that I can then reach out to even more if I'm not hearing back from the first couple people that I really want to hear from. It really is a skill and it becomes a puzzle and it becomes a game and that's where yeah. the part is. And when there's no better rush than for me to reach out to the CEO, the COO, the this person, that person, and when one person gets back in touch with me, that's great. But then when that person starts having a conversation with me, right. and sends me the email or sends me his phone number and we book a call and get on a phone, that's a rush. Right. That right. keeps me going because it gives me that, you know, that incentive to keep going. Yeah. So, yeah. Did yeah. you did you find before you were comfortable with reaching out to companies that you spent more time thinking about it than actually doing it? You know what I mean? Totally. Like like you, you you'd reach out once and you think about that one outreach like five times where now you're just like do 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 not yeah. so much thinking. Yeah. I don't even think about it anymore. I just know I have a job to do and my job is to get connections and start conversations and start relationships. That's the biggest thing. People want to work with people they know, like, trust. Steven mm -hmm. uh, just did a, uh, a post on that, and it's the truth. And if this, I guess, you know, this um, whole licensing, uh, I don't want to say, this whole licensing career yeah. is a, is a long-term game thing. You know, you have to be in it for the long haul. Yeah. And, it's not something that's going to happen. You're not going to make these great connections and have a lifelong, you know, relationship with somebody in three months. It's just not going to happen. Right. I've, I've been in it long enough, but I had the thing. I had to start somewhere. I think when I started with Invent, I mean, I knew nothing when I came into Invent. Right about licensing. I barely, like I say, I barely knew how to spell the word. I still don't know how to spell the word. <laughs> it is kind of a weird word to spell, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Me. especially licensee and licensor, the inventor's the licensor, the company's the licensee. Yeah. So that would be a good segue into wrapping up here and talking about our premium program and talking about Gateway. So you said it's a long-term thing, and I think sometimes people, they have one idea they're really focused on, but you talk to the inventor, you, t you and Sylvia talk to tons of inventors all the time, yeah. And they're like, I, you know, Bob's like, I got a hundred other ideas too, but this is the one I'm focused on. Like, great. Well, we're going to be really servicing this guy with the premium one-year coaching because we're going to help him with this project and he's going to have something else to jump onto whether or not he licenses that first project. So now we know we're empowering them for life, right? And, and then you got another inventor that's like, well, I got this one idea. I don't have any other ideas right now, but I do think about ideas all the time. Yeah, I want to come up with more ideas, but this is what I'm focused on now. So they would also benefit from the, the coaching, you know, and the, the hand-holding and the guidance. Um, now, other people, like you mentioned, uh, they're like, I got this one idea. I'm not, they don't necessarily say I'm not really an inventor, but they say, I don't, I just don't want to put the time in. I don't want to put the work in because it is a new skill to learn. And, and with those people, we go with the, the gateway program. Yeah, right? and I, I think too that it's like there are two different mindsets of people who come into premium. Like I, me personally, gateway would not have worked for me. I wanted to learn how to do it because I had a lot of ideas. I wanted to eventually, uh, I wanted to absorb and learn everything I could from the people who have already done it so that I could then go out and do it on my own. And you are. 
and I am. <laughs> yeah. Gateway is for the the ones they they don't really want to learn it. They have no interest in learning. They have other things going on in their life, but they just need that extra little bit of help, whether they need a sell sheet or what, you know, they need definitely one of the main benefits of Gateway is finding those companies, not just the companies, finding the key player in the company that says, yeah. yes, I want to look at this idea. And companies are open to ideas more than ever. I just went to the Chicago Houseware show last weekend. I, of course, I ran into some companies that say, nope, we have our own product development team. Okay, great. I ran into so many companies that are open to outside ideas from the world out there. But I've also heard, and I'm just going to throw this in, that companies do not want to work with inventors that don't know how it all works. Right, right. They want to work with inventors that at least have a bit of working knowledge of how licensing works. Because it's not the company's job to educate the inventor. Uh, like, like asking for a million bucks up front or yeah. something like that. You know? Yeah. Will you buy yeah. my patent? Or it's a rookie I've got a thing 25 percent royalty. Or I, you need to have it this color or this size or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and that's probably the biggest frustration that companies have. Yeah. Is that the the newbie inventor or the newbie the person who's pitching the idea? They don't know the lingo, the language, the process, the time it takes. What a company has to put into you know bringing that product to market. Mm -hmm. And they also say that, and this was interesting, one guy I talked to over the weekend, he said, I can tell a new inventor from a seasoned inventor a mile away. Yeah, yeah. Well, and companies tell us all the time, you've spoken to a lot of them that are like, I know when it's an InventRight member because yeah. they approach things a very particular way and it's very yeah. professional. And so if somebody doesn't want to become a member and get coached, you know, that's through the premium program, they can do Gateway. And then we'll make sure that what we're doing is professional right. to, to when we reach out, you know, um, yeah. for the inventor. Yeah. So I, I think that we're servicing, you know, we've come up with a solution to service both types of inventors yeah. the ones that want to learn how to do it because they want to do it for a lifetime. And then those who, um, just they have one idea and they just want to see they you know it's it's the worst feeling in the world to be an inventor have a great idea and not do anything about it and then years later see your product yeah. out the market that is the it's like oh right in the stomach like why didn't i do yeah that? yeah I mean, and, and i i hear that's i mean i've had that happen to me i i, I just had it happen a month ago i had oh my, really oh i didn't know that idea about two years ago and I didn't do anything with it. And I thought I'm going to do something with that. I, I did a quick search. It's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should feel good. It validates you're a good inventor and you have good ideas and you're just moving on. You're a pro at this point. So even though it's probably a little hard, I'm sure you're, you're probably already over it more or less. I am. I, I, the, I, and the, the interesting thing about what I'm doing now is that I, I don't get a lot of no's. I just get a lot of no, no responses. Right. Which um, is normal. So that would be another tip. So if you guys are not getting our coaching or mentoring or not doing our gateway program and you're reaching out to companies, it's very, very normal to get non responses and you have to follow up many, many times. Uh, you know, email, LinkedIn, phone, those are the main three ways. Sometimes you can use social media, Facebook or whatever, use some weird ways to get in. But um, I do oh, use Facebook too. I Facebook. Yeah. You they don't have a, you know, really, I use everything. There's no one set thing. LinkedIn seems to be my primary go-to. But if they, if the company has no presence on LinkedIn or they don't have any employees on LinkedIn, I will go to Facebook and if they if they're very active on Facebook, I'll reach out to Facebook. I just got yeah. a really nice response, and I'll say the company's name. They're not open to outside ideas. Dyson. Yeah, yeah. And whoever wrote, and it was not one of those generic answers. It was very thought out and very keyed to my question about are you open to outside ideas? Mm. And they were very kind about it, um, and I thank them very much. And they're definitely. Not I've open. always found that one weird. He's like the the gentleman that started the company. Very much an inventor, markets himself as an inventor, yeah. but he uh, he just he doesn't want to receive outside yeah. ideas, you know. And again, I, I and the other day, this is a funny story because I was reaching I was uh, reaching out to Messenger to another company, one for one of our Gateway clients, and so I'm having this conversation in a Facebook message back and forth, 
like a regular convert, just like LinkedIn or, or text or whatever. And I said, well, is there a good email that I can, that I can send something over? You know, our client can send something over. And he said, yeah, or I didn't even know it was a he and put the email address. And then when I did go to LinkedIn, which they didn't have a big presence on LinkedIn, it was the owner of the company I was talking to. Nice. That he yeah. was reaching. And some people think that's so crazy. The owner of the company is talking on Facebook. And I'm like, well, the owner of our company does too. You know, I mean, he, he answers his own LinkedIn. He is, you know, he does all that. Steven does all that stuff. You do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not common. I don't think, I don't think it's uncommon for owners of companies to be. I, I think it's hard for inventors to accept that a big part of inventing is not actually coming up with the idea, but the yeah. outreach. You're and right. once they accept that, whether we're coaching them to do it or they're paying us to do it through the gateway program um, or they're doing it on their own, they need to accept that. And if you don't accept that, you're not really an inventor. You're a person with ideas. When you start reaching out to everybody, that's when you can call yourself an inventor. Yeah. Um, I mean, is, is somebody an artist that has all their paintings in their garage and they literally never go to arts and crafts fair and never try to get it into people's houses or in museums or anywhere? I mean, are they an artist? They're an artist. But nobody can enjoy their art, and inventors are basically artists. We're product artists, and people need to be able to enjoy our stuff. But if it's all in your head and it's all in your garage, it's never going to happen. And the actual creation of the art, the same thing with artists, they don't know how to market themselves. Inventors don't know how to market their product. And you don't have to market it. You just have to give it to a company and let them market it. But you, right. have, to, you right. have to get it to them. You have to show them the marketing. Um, and, and that's very hard for people to do. Reaching out, learning how to reach out is a skill that anybody can do just to kind of let everybody know. I have no college degree. I have no business background. I have nothing like that. And I came in not knowing anything about reaching out to companies, yet I did it over and over and over through the fear, through the mistakes. I made a ton of mistakes. I've hung up on people in the middle of a call. Um, you know, I've made my share of mistakes. You have to tell me about that one later. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I was just in the middle of a call. The call dropped. Oh, like, okay. I got dropped. it. And, and I kind of learned, make sure I got good cell service wherever I'm at. And the guy actually called me back. And, uh, but I, I learned this all and how I, this is what I love about InventRate is that in, in our premium membership, and you say it all the time, it's experiential learning. Right. The way for us to learn anything is to experience it. And the best way to experience it is to experience it with people who have already done it. You know, right. I take people on calls all the time. We're gonna make sure, we're like, a, a InventRight is like we're giving you the recipe for licensing. You know, you have to do everything the right way, but you also have to do it in the right order. Right. You know, we, we having, a, having a personal coach, a personal mentor, someone who's a seasoned, experienced advisor, walk with you through everything, making sure that you're staying on track, moving forward at a good pace, having someone answer all your millions of questions because you're going to have a lot of them because I did. I kept apologizing to Paul. I'm so sorry I got more questions. But a good student will ask a lot of questions. Yeah. And then the biggest one, and I didn't realize until I got all completely out of invent right, licensed my product, and I was talking to somebody. I was working, you know, talking to somebody on the phone, and I said I didn't make any mistakes. The whole time I was with InventRight, I huh. didn't make one mistake because I was I had somebody to stop me. Right. Because I, I could run things by my coach every time. Right. I did this, should I do yeah. this, should I do that? And what I learned about being in the InventRight membership is a lot of things I heard on YouTube or even read in Stephen's book, they were true and accurate, but they did not apply to my particular product, right, right. my particular industry. Right. And but I did it give you an extra sense of confidence when the coach said, yes, for your product, that is the right thing to do, or I would tweak it here or there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I thought, like, I didn't, I licensed my product without a demo video. I thought for sure I would have had to have a demo video because that's what I read. That's what I heard. Right. Because, you know, your product's just so simple. I mean, from a sales sheet, and I did, I licensed it without a demo. But every, every case is different. Then we got another student that's like, oh, just do a video. Don't do a sales sheet or do both. Exactly. or whatever yeah, you know um, or so, your list of companies is completely off like god you're gonna waste a lot what, of time reaching out to those companies that's what happened with me my list of companies was off yeah I, every shower caddy every shower caddy company you can imagine and 
calls like Dana, they, they only do wood shower caddies. They're not going to take a look at your mesh shower caddy. Mm -hmm. That saved me a ton of time. But And it's really, it's terrible that people make those mistakes like that and then they just give up. You know, and but when they're with us and the coach is glued to them, they're like, well, first of all, they probably won't even make that mistake to begin with. Right. You know, right. not that's to say, but things that will happen is people will be frustrated at times. And I, the thing that I've been saying a lot lately, if you're not frustrated with something, you're not doing the work. I can't yeah. get into my favorite company. This person's not responding, whatever it is. You know, I'm struggling with the sell sheet, whatever it is. Um, but that's that's fine, too. So once people accept these things that... 90% of licensing your product is not the actual invention itself, mm -hmm. but the process that we teach yeah. and accepting that you're going to get a lot of no's um, and just tweaking things in. Dana, thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah, I could, I could have gone like two hours or something, but I'm like, shit, I, this is, this thing's going I, a little long. Um, gosh, yeah, I, I like swearing every once in a while to shock people. Oh my God, Andrew just swore. Um, but uh, anyway. I, I don't think I swore. No, no, you didn't. You did good. You did good. I, I, shame on me. Um, anyway, Dana, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for being an advisor, being so kind and caring with people when they call. And if you guys ever call Dana and you're interested in one of our programs, we're never pushy with anybody. Call me if she's pushy with you. But trust me, she. I've never got that call before, so I'm, I know she's not. I'm a little not. blunt, though. I'm. Yeah, I'm, she. You're blunt, but you're never pushy. But I'm honest. I'm honest. Hon yeah, but that's that's who we are as a company too. Yeah. You know, so I love that. And then thank you for being our inventors relations manager and getting all these companies, you know, for, for our members. I really appreciate that. And just thank you so much. Well, you're welcome, Andrew. Thank you're, you. You're so, okay. Thank you for the, our inventor community and, and what you did and InventRight did for, for me. Because I was out there for 20 years. I was out there floundering around like, what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. And then I randomly found Stephen's book, One Simple Idea. And called you and and um you told me what you were going to do i think you you talked to do you talk to me i forget i think you did, I did. yeah I did okay talk. i was like yeah yeah, yeah I talk to you yeah now 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 you pick up the phones you do a better job than i do anyway so all right <laughs> everybody make... thank you dana thank you everybody okay. take care keep inventing see you guys next time bye, bye.